Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash Entitled People, where you'll hear stories about people who think they can do whatever they want because they deserve it. Guys, I hope you're having a great day today. And you know the drill. It's going to be another episode of the most insanely entitled people ever. So sit back, put up your feet, and enjoy the stories. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for future tales, my friends. So let me preface this by saying that this is my mom's story, not mine. I don't know all the details because I know it's a painful memory and I don't want to make her relive it. Now, my mom is the youngest of two girls. She and my dad went to high school together but didn't start dating until they were both in college. It was a chance meeting that they ran into each other in a bar. It was a cute story and they're still happily married and in love 23 years later. Now, it all started when my mom got engaged. My aunt was so upset because she wasn't engaged first, even though she was older. My mom and my sister are 10 years apart. My mom was 28 at the time, and her sister was 38. Throughout all the planning, she was pouting and kind of cold towards my mom. So the day of the wedding comes. My mom is getting ready with her bridesmaids. She's marrying the guy she's had a crush on since high school. She has her perfect venue, and she's wearing her dream dress. Everything is going absolutely perfect. That is, until my aunt starts to cry. Now, my mom tried to comfort her because she is the most selfless woman in the world. Even though she was getting married in mere hours, she was focused on her sister. So a little while later, after my aunt ran off, my grandmother pulled my mom aside. Like I said, I don't know every detail, but the conversation went something like this. So my grandma pulls my mom aside and says, Hey, you're making your sister very upset. Now, my mom really confused asked, What did I do? You're way too happy. It's making your sister upset that she didn't get married before you did. Can you just be a little less happy when you're around her? Now, with this, my mom was in shock. This was supposed to be the happiest day of her life, and here was her mother telling her to be less happy, so her 38-year-old sister didn't get butt hurt. So my mom's whole life, she was always told to set her accomplishments aside, so her sister felt special too. So my mom then said, Look, mom, I'm so sorry that she's upset, but today's my wedding day. My husband and I are very happy, and I'm not gonna hide that or pretend that I'm not, just so my sister won't be sad. Today's the happiest day of my life, and I'm not giving that up for anybody. Now, my grandmother did shut up after that. She did give my mom a disapproving look, though. After that, the wedding was perfect. My mother still talks about it with stars in her eyes. Now, my mother still has to deal with her crap sometimes, but she also has my dad and us kids to help stand up for her. She's very happy, and I'm so glad that she stood up for herself. This is absolutely outrageous. (laughs) Imagine being told on your own wedding day to tone down your happiness, to not upset others. Like, it definitely sounds like there's a giant kid trapped in a 38-year-old's body. Maybe that's a reason why she's not married. With that said, I'm so glad that OP enjoyed her wedding day regardless. Whatever happened to being happy for your sister, come on. So, for some background, I work in a retail chain. Most of the time, I work behind the till. Now, recently, the government's been cracking down on items such as knives, cigarettes, lighters, etc. that are being sold to people underage. So, in our store, it's company policy to ask for ID on these said items, if they look underage. Now, I do want to note that if it was found out that I had sold an item to an underage person, I would lose my job and have an investigation done by police. I'd also be looking at a criminal record if they found reason, and I'm not losing my job over lighters. So, to the entitlement. It was a regular day in the store. The tills were extremely busy, and the store was making big bucks, as it was around Christmas. So a customer had just finished paying and was leaving, while I called for the next customer. This typical looking adult wannabe teen girl came up to my till with a few things and set them down on the conveyor belt. So I began scanning her things and then I scanned the lighters. So the way our system works is when something's scanned that needs ID, the screen goes red and informs me that the customer needs to produce ID. So I keep scanning the rest of her items just in case there's more ID'd goods. I get to the end of her items and then the conversation begins. I said, excuse me ma'am, do you have any ID on you? She says, What do I need ID for? Now I tell her it's for the lighters. They're age restricted. If you have an ID with you, I can check them on the system and you can purchase them. She then says, Well, I don't have any ID on me. Can't you just let it go? I'm over 18. Now, to me, she didn't seem old enough. I told her, Sorry ma'am, I still need to verify your age to make the purchase. Now by this stage, my till had a very big line and the whole situation was starting to become a big scene. This is where it starts to get interesting though. She screams and says, I'm over 18. 
Let me take my lighters. You've already scanned it through. You can't take out something that's already been scanned. So at this point, I'm thinking, never tell a cashier what they can and can't do. I looked back at my computer, and the woman at this point smirks, thinking she's won. I then turn the computer around to face her. I look her dead in the eyes as I click the big red button that says, no ID. And then the lighters disappear from the list. Her mouth drops open, and her face goes red. In my best retail voice, I ask, will you be paying cash or card? So at this point, the woman explodes and shouts at me with a lot of swearing, and I'm not even going to dignify what she said. One thing she said was, my son will not have any lighters now. I hope you're happy. So with that, she left without her items and her lighters. Now, I told my manager after, and he said I was doing my job, so I'm not in the wrong. But this is not the end. On my next shift, I get called into the office, and I'm told that this woman complained to head office of the retail chain about me. She had told them that I had verbally abused her, and that she was seriously offended and wanted to get the police involved, and wanted to have me fired. It turns out the woman was 20 years old, so she could have bought the lighters if she had brought ID. My manager tells me all of this smiling, but he still has the biggest bombshell to drop. So after he received the phone call from the head office, they asked for the CCTV footage. My manager watched over the footage and heard everything, and I mean everything. Her last line before she left was of particular interest. It turns out that the woman did have a son, but her son was most certainly not 18. So to cut a long story short, the woman is under investigation by police for child abuse, and if found guilty, is looking at jail time. So for future reference, bring your ID everywhere you go. Guys, I had no idea that you had to be 18 years old to buy lighters at all. But then again, I don't smoke, nor have I ever needed to use a lighter, so I would never know if not for this post. I'm also very curious to how and where OP lives that trying to purchase a lighter would result in an investigation by police and potentially lead to jail time. I was working at the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, and we had already closed the theater for the start of the show. So this woman barrels up to me, gets within six inches of my face, and waves her paper fast pass ticket in my face. She demanded to be allowed into the show, and she screams that her child, a little boy no more than six years old, needs to see the show, or his day, is ruined. Now, this lady was screaming so loud that veins were popping out of her forehead. I stood there calm and collected, explaining to her that the theater's full, and we can't let anybody else in. She pushes past me with one arm, holding her child's arm in the other. She then marches straight for the ropes that block the entrance and tries to hoist her son over the rope. Before she gets that far, a manager walks up to her and puts his hands in the air trying to contain the situation. He offers to get the kid an ice cream and provide VIP seats to the next show if she calms down and comes back later. So after screaming about how rude I was to her, which I was not, she accepts the token of kindness. My manager then turns to me and asked how long my shift is today. I told him I was off work at 6.30. He nods and tells the irate woman that he will have me personally escort her to the VIP section down front. He then writes her a ticket voucher for the ice cream and the seats, and she fumes off with not even a thank you. My manager then turns to me and apologizes on behalf of her. He then asked me, how many more shows do we have today? I then looked at the clock and realized that it was after 5 p.m., and we were well in the middle of our last show of the day. Now, I looked at my manager as a sly smile crept across his face. He had just given an entitled parent a VIP pass to a show that won't even happen. So at this point, the respect I had for him just skyrocketed through the roof. I was long gone by the time she came back, but I would love to imagine the look on her face when she came back at 7 o'clock for the last show. The kid gets ice cream and the mom gets mad. It's a win-win. I want to say that OP's manager is absolutely fantastic. What a way to defuse a situation and still put a smile on the boy's face. Well done, sir. Well done. Now, this story is about my mother and her insane need to be right. When I was younger, my father had a massive heart attack, and the result being that we need to change the family diet to something more heart healthy. Now, lots of people go see food for heart healthy diets because of all the healthy oils and fats. So shellfish and fish were a large part of the household. So one night after we had shrimp pasta, I started to get this weird feeling all over my body. I felt like my whole body was on fire, and my nose was so stuffed up that I had to take deep breaths through my mouth. I look up at my arms and giant red splotches started to appear all over me. At this point, I call my mother over and exclaim that I must be allergic to shrimp. She then looks at me and replies, It doesn't look that bad, just go to sleep. 
So the entire night, I tossed and turned, unable to catch my breath or get away from the relentless heat oozing off my skin. I decided that day that I would never eat shrimp again. So the next couple of times my mother made a meal with shrimp, I would politely decline and ask her to make something else for me. Now, even though I ate something different, I was still feeling strange after the meal. It was starting to get to the point where I would be gasping for air, barely able to swallow, and I was wheezing. I assumed that being in the same room when they cooked the shrimp might be enough to make me feel sick. I mentioned this to my mother and got an irritated sigh and an eye roll saying, You are not allergic to shrimp. So the next time dinner with shrimp rolls around, I just don't say anything. The symptoms came on as usual, but I just kept it to myself. Now apparently the lack of mentioning how bad I felt was me admitting that I was fine. So my mother walks over proud of herself, sits down next to me and says, See? I've been rubbing shrimp on all of your utensils before you ate, and you're perfectly fine. I've been doing this for a while now, I told you you're not allergic to shrimp. Needless to say, I eventually went full anaphylaxis. I went to go see an allergist, and after my allergy panel, the doctor declared a very long list of foods, plants, and molds that I was allergic to. And guess what was on the deathly allergic list? Shrimp. My mother's reaction when I pointed this out was, she shrugged and said, Oops. I guess you're not eating shrimp anymore. This was about a decade ago and I still can't eat the food she's prepared. She's just tested me again with onions just last year. She tells me there's no spices on things and then remembers when my throat starts closing up and I have to devour Benadryl. The worst part is my father knows and he doesn't warn me. So that's my story of my mother preferring to be correct over me being alive. To put some fears aside, I no longer live with my parents and are in light contact with them. My husband takes my allergies very seriously and he doesn't even allow them in the house. So I'm safe from the poisonings. Also, I know a lot of people don't understand why I'm in contact at all. The cycle of abuse is a crazy thing, especially when it's all you know. You think it's normal until you escape. I'm in massive amounts of therapy and working on my mental and my physical health. Guys, this has got to be one of the most insane stories I've ever read. Like seriously, what is up with some people and believing that allergies are fake? I can't believe she rubbed shrimp on Opie's utensils to try to prove them wrong. Guys, I don't know why, but it makes that so much worse. That mom should definitely be locked up. So, a little backstory. My husband and I have now been married for almost 18 years. My mother-in-law is the most entitled person I have ever known. So when my husband and I were engaged, he had one credit card that he used for emergencies or small things. So we were in the process of buying a house and getting married, so he paid it off so we would have it if we needed it for the house. We never ended up using it and just kept it strictly for emergencies. So the statement for the card comes in and showed thousands of dollars in purchases, including Disney World tickets for three with all expenses paid, a stereo system, clothes, a computer desk, several semesters of college for one of his younger brothers, and more. Now, my husband was pissed. He calls the card company and they stated it was on his second card. He tried to explain that he didn't have a second card, and that's when they revealed that he had signed for a second card on his application, which he didn't. So apparently his mom saw him fill out the application and said that she'd drop it off at the post office for him, as she had other mail. Once he left, she opened it and marked a second card for herself and went to mail it off. So prior to our engagement, my husband was paying almost all of his mom's expenses as he was the oldest out of five kids and felt responsible for them. Once we became engaged, and especially once I became pregnant, he told his mom that he couldn't anymore as he had his own family to take care of now, and mother-in-law did not take that well. She took that second card and took two siblings to Disney World and everything else listed above. My husband storms into his mom's kitchen and demanded the card. So this is how the conversation goes down. He says, give me the credit card now. So apparently the mom acts surprised and says, what are you talking about? My husband then explained that it was the one she signed for herself and just spent thousands of dollars on. And she says, oh, I was going to wait until your birthday and give it to you as a present and well, now you ruined it. So she then hands over the card grudgingly, and Hubby promptly cuts it up, making her very upset. He tells her it was supposed to help us through the house, the wedding, and the pregnancy, and now we were thousands of dollars in debt, and she needed to pay us back. She then says, Oh, I don't have that kind of money. I'm your mother, and you needed to help me. We're family. Family. So mother-in-law calls in his youngest sister and the youngest brother, who's developmentally delayed to write a check for 100 bucks from each of their accounts to pay for their trip to Disney World, and gave us another 100 bucks in loose pennies. 
So fast forward three years, she comes to our tiny two bedroom apartment and tells my husband, What happened? You used to be so good with money. Now I had to get in front of him and tell her to leave before she got hurt. Never in my life have I ever seen him so angry. So yeah, that's how we ended up with $10,000 in credit card fees, including late fees. And he wouldn't press charges because it's his mom. Another story where an entitled family member thinks they can do whatever they want. And in this case, the mom gets away scot-free. I love this comment right here. This person says, If my mother pulled that, I guarantee that she would be so far in jail that they would be mailing her daylight. Now guys, listen, how many of you would have reported your mama? L let me know in the comments below. And that wraps up another episode of r slash Entitled People Guys. We survived another one. I hope you enjoyed the stories today. And if you did, do remember to subscribe. If you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. And if you missed the last episode of r slash Entitled People, an entitled woman steals OP son's toys. And the excuse is outrageous. She says she's allowed to because her husband is a military sergeant. Check it out if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.